Gary Machuda mentioned something interesting, that you see how the scriptures are inspired and the Holy Spirit designed the speeches to point to greater spiritual truths. And we need to seek the Holy Spirit, seek his wisdom to plunge the depth of scripture, and you will find miracles in the Bible. It is. So remember the names of John's parents, Zechariah, Elizabeth. They are from the line of Aaron. Elizabeth is one of the daughters of Aaron. And Zechariah is a descendant of Aaron, a priest who served in the temple, which means John the Baptist is an Aaronic priest. He is a Levitical priest from the line of Aaron. Right? Are you listening? We're learning? Learn. Class has begun. So Zechariah, Elizabeth, and then John's name. Now, notice one thing about John. He will be filled, Luke 11, Luke 1, 11 to 17, and this was Luke 1, 5 to 7. And verse 15, it says, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit while yet in his mother's womb. Notice, he'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> his mother, Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, and Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, let's go through the names. You guys are going to get blown away. Some stuff I've already done, but creature repetition, we need to hear something repetitively uh, to become second nature. All right? So watch, John, what are the Hebrew forms of these names? Zechariah in Hebrew, Zechariah. Now, I give you the links. You click here, it'll take you there. Zechariah, remember what it means. Jah has remembered. Okay, get ready to get, get excited, blown away. What does Zechariah mean? It means... Remembered by Yah or Yahweh remembered. Jah has remembered. Remembered. Zakar. All right. What about the name Elizabeth? Elizabeth. All right. In Hebrew, Eli Shiva or Eli Shiba. Eli means my God. Can mean my God. And what does her name mean? Look, you click right here so you don't think I'm making it up. I document to be as accurate as possible. Eli Sheva or Sheba means God is an oath. My God of the oath, meaning my God is an oath keeping God. If you want to know what it means, what does it mean? Eli Sheba, my God of the oath. It means my God is an oath keeping God. He keeps his oaths and promises. You getting it? He keeps his oaths. And promises. Are you learning the names? All right. What about John? Yohanan. Okay, now, what does the word John mean in Hebrew? Yohanan. 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 A form of Yehohanan. Yeho is gracious, is merciful, is compassionate. Click, boom. <clears throat> the Lord has been gracious. So the word Yahanan, Yaho Hanan <clears throat> means <clears throat> Yahowah, Yaho has been gracious, compassionate, merciful. Okay? Now, the Lord has been gracious. You see it? And it comes from Yahovah, Yaho, Yahweh, Hanan. Lord has been gracious. The word Hanan, what does that mean? Hanan. Hanan. Be merciful, compassionate, favorable, inclined towards. Be merciful, compassionate, favorable. That's what the word Hanan means. You get it? You're learning names, right? Okay. Why is this important? Gary Machuda brought this out, and it was amazing. Now, notice Zechariah, when his son is born, his mouth is open because he was deaf and mute as a sign of discipline for not believing Gabriel. And then when his son was born, his mouth opened. And now notice, he's filled with the Holy Spirit and he breaks out in praise. Filled with the Holy Spirit and he breaks out in praise. Now I can sit in the kitchen. Let me sit in the kitchen. All right. Yeah, it's not in Greek. It's in Hebrew. That tells you the substratum of the Gospels, right, is Hebrew Aramaic. Filled 
with the Holy Spirit, right? Okay. He breaks out in praise like the Blessed Mother broke out in praise earlier. The Magnificat. Right? Her Magnificat is from Luke 1, 46 to 55. The Lord give us perfect recall and obedience to the Scriptures. Let me sit down in the kitchen now. Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I can unbrack, un uh, unbrack, unpack what he's alluding to. See, one thing I need to remind you. The New Testament is filled, is filled with references to the Old Testament. Allusions or direct citation of Old Testament themes, historical events, and prophecies. If you do not know the Old Testament, then much of the New Testament will be oblivious to you. So Zechariah, who is steeped in the Old Testament because he's a priest, one of the functions of priests happened to be to teach the law, to know the law, expound on the law, and to model the law. Okay? So he knows the law, and he knows the promises. So if you're not aware of the Old Testament, you're not going to be aware of the allusions to the Old Testament. Okay? And his father, Zechariah, is filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he visited and accomplished redemption for his people. Now he's finally come to bring redemption to his people. So if you want me to go in depth, we'll go in depth. All right. And raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of David, a servant. Now, you may be wondering what a horn of salvation is <clears throat> and why in the house of David. This is referring to the messianic promise. This is referring to the messianic promise. What do I mean? Zechariah, the Jews knew, knew <clears throat> that God had sworn to raise up a king from the line of David, whom they call the Messiah, who would bring salvation. The word horn is a metaphor for king. Okay, with me there? The word horn means a king with power, dominion. How do I know? All right, see how you guys are? You're too slow, dude. Let me show you. Are you ready? All right, let me show you. What does the word horn refer to? Here you go. Revelation 17, 12. Revelation 17, 12. And the ten horns, which you saw, are ten kings who have not yet received the kingdom, but to receive authority as kings with the beast for an hour. See, see why you got to know the Bible and ask the Spirit to give you illumination? To interpret it correctly? So again, what is a horn of salvation? Meaning a king who will bring salvation. And this king is from the house of David, the Messiah. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. In other words, God has fulfilled the promises that a king would arise from the house of David, the Messiah who brings salvation. And then what do you find in the next chapter? A group of angels appear to shepherds in the field. And what do they say in Luke 2, 11? Let's read 8 to 11. Luke 2, 11. So you guys want meat, right? All right, let's go deep. Luke 2, 11, 8 to 11. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. An angel of the Lord. This is not the angel of the Old Testament who is God. That angel becomes the man, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Every other angel in the New Testament are creatures. Stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people for today in the city of David, Bethlehem. That's the city of David. He's from Bethlehem. Jesus born in Bethlehem. There's been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. See now what a horn of salvation is? Christ the Lord. So now we got that part. What Zechariah is referring to? God bless you, SJ. Support our sister. Now, let's continue. 
Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Here are the key words. Remember what Canaan means? To be gracious, favorable, merciful, compassionate, right? To show mercy, Helios, to our fathers, to remember his holy covenant. Remember the holy covenant? He remembers the covenant that he made and he will fulfill it. Why? Because he's the God who keeps his oaths. The oath which he swore to Abraham, our father, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hand of our enemies, might serve without fear, not being afraid, will be killed for worshiping him alone in holiness and righteousness. And we have to be holy and righteous in his sight. Otherwise, if we sin, we'll be cut off, right? All our days. And you, child, he's now talking about John, will be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go on before the Lord to make his ready his ways. I'm going to come back to this. To give his people, you're going to give Israel the knowledge of how to be saved. Isn't that what John did? Later on, he went baptizing, telling them, acknowledge your sin, acknowledge your transgressions, turn from them and get baptized so that God will see that and show you mercy in order to prepare your hearts for the Savior. See how everything ties in? I'm going to go a little deeper. But I need you to pay attention. You're going to give them knowledge of how to be saved. And he did. This salvation that will result in the forgiveness of their sins. And why will they be forgiven? Because of the tender mercy of our God. Our God is merciful, compassionate, wants to save, not destroy. I'm going to get into this in a minute. This last part, we'll get into it. With which the sunrise from on high will visit us to shine upon those who sin in darkness and the shadow of death. To direct our feet into the way of peace. This part here, we're going to explain. That's Luke 1, 78, 79. But let's see if you remember. What was Zechariah's name? Remember these words. Mercy, remember an oath. Luke 1, 72, 73. Mercy, remember an oath. What was Zechariah's name? Let's see. Zechariah, Jah has remembered. You have remembered. What was Elizabeth's name? Eli Sheva Sheba, God is an oath, my God of the oath, who keeps the oath. God who keeps his oath. So there's that word oath. What is John's name? Yah Hanan, Yo Hanan, Yeho Hanan. Yah has been gracious. Yah has been merciful, compassionate. Right? Hanan, to be merciful, compassionate. You see the elements of the name? Be merciful, compassion. Now, let's check it out. There's the word mercy. That's from Hanan. There's a word remember. That's from the word Zakar, Zachariah. There's the word oath from Elizabeth's name, Eli Sheva. And what does the word for mercy mean in Greek? Helios? Mercy, pity, compassion. Right? Now, the clue. Here it is. Got it now? Let's see. Here's the clue. Watch here. To show mercy, Yachanan, that's what John's name means, toward our fathers. To remember, Zekar, Yah, that's what Zekar means. Yah has remembered. Notice, he shows mercy. Who? Yah. Yah is merciful, compassionate. Who remembers? Yah remembers. Who keeps his oath? God keeps his oath. There it is right there. See it? You see it before I move on? You have the elements of the names of Zechariah, Elizabeth, and John because their names are prophetic. Their names are prophetic. You understand? I'll probably have to send out my catch. I hope you don't mind. In other words, if you haven't gotten the memo, if you've been following me for years, you should know this already. Names of individuals are given to point to greater spiritualities. Names are symbols of future events or greater spiritual realities. They're not merely names. They have prophetic significance. They have prophetic significance. So Zechariah... <clears throat> 
Elizabeth and John, their names are not coincidental. Their names are deliberate because their names signify Jehovah has remembered his oath and in his compassion, he's now fulfilling it. You got it? Yep, like Peter the Rock. Jehovah has remembered his oath. And now in his mercy, compassion, he's fulfilling his oath. Do you see the name? And there's a reason why it's John, the high priest. We can get into that. How deep you want me to go? Because we can do a two-parter. But now I want to show you something else. I want you to see this part here. Okay. You ready to go a little deeper? Okay, here's what I got to do. First of all, let's go here. See, so if you don't know your Old Testament, you're not going to see what Zechariah is referring to. All right. Because of the tender mercy of our God, with which the sunrise from on high will visit us, to shine upon those who sit in darkness the shadow of death. Keep in mind this part here. To direct our feet into the way of peace. John is the forerunner. The forerunner of this one. Who comes and brings you out of the shadow of death, out of the darkness. Okay, now watch this reference. Let's see if you make the connection. What is Zechariah alluding to? Let's see. You want me to go deep, right? You don't want surface. You don't want to sleep. And Well, no, Tham, this is all boring, Tham. Tham, you're boring me, man. Corey, pray, blesses me and fills me to love Jesus forever and ever. Never shame him. Okay, now let's see. Let's see here. Notice the illusion here. To shine upon those who sin in darkness, the shadow of death, to direct our feet into the way of peace. What is this referring to? Let's see. Look how much Bible Zechariah and the Blessed Mother knew. Isaiah 9, 1 and 2. Let's see if you make the connection. But there will be no more gloom for her who was in anguish. In earlier times, he treated the land of Zebulon, the land of Naphtali, with contempt. But later on, he shall make it glorious by the way of the sea, that's Jordan, where did John baptize? Jordan. Where did Jesus begin his ministry? Galilee of the Gentiles. From Galilee, what will happen? Let's see if you now make the connection. From Galilee will arise a great light. The people walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in the land of the shadow of death, the light will shine on them. Oh, this is what Zechariah was referring to. Isaiah 9 where it says, from Galilee of the Gentiles, God will have a great light shine to bring those in darkness out of the shadow of death. That's what Zechariah was referring to. Zechariah was saying, God is now fulfilling Isaiah 9. Tony, you want me to send you to Mike Winger, brother? All right, you got it? Not you, Tony Galeana, the fake Tony. Right? You got it here? You see why you got to know your Old Testament? Well, hold on, hold on. Watch here. How deep you want me to go, man, if you can track? He's quoting this now. What or who is the great light that will shine out of Galilee to bring people out of darkness? Isaiah 9, 6, 7 here. For a child will be born to us. It's the child. A son will be given to us. And the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. The great light that shines from Galilee to bring people out of darkness into light is the child born, a male child born of a woman who's the mighty God in the flesh. The eternal father, the one who brings eternity. We know that as Jay Thompson. Takerisi, lady. Takerisi. Prince of Peace. And who's the child? There will be no end to the increase of his government of peace. On the throne of David, the Messiah, the horn of salvation in the house of David, a servant, like Zechariah said, on the throne of David over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore, the zeal of Yahweh hosts will accomplish this. You see what Zechariah is alluding to? But hold on. Where will this child minister? 
Where will he shine from? Let's see. Galilee of the Gentiles, right? And who is this child? A male baby born. How do we know? Because he's born. That means he's born of a woman. He's the son. And he's the great light and the mighty God. Now watch what Gabriel says to Mary. Remember Galilee, right? Galilee, right? All right. Watch what Gabriel says to Mary in Luke 1. Luke 1, 26, 35. Now in the sixth month, sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee. Surprise, surprise, David. Galilee. Called Nazareth. Wait. Where would this child shine from? Born in Bethlehem, but raised in Galilee? Galilee. Surprise, David. And the child is who? The mighty God. The son who sits on David's throne. Wow. Watch here now. Galilee. All right. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. Whose throne will the child sit on? Oh, the throne of David. Say what? And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was very perplexed at this statement. And was pondering what kind of greeting this was. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. Wait, he's great and he's a son? Let's see the prophecy again. A son will be given to us. And what is he? The great light. Say what? You got it? Do you guys see it? What Luke 1 is referring to? All right. And what Gabriel's telling Mary? Mary knows the Old Testament. <clears throat> so Mary knows that Gabriel's saying, you're the woman who's going to fulfill Isaiah 7 and 9. You're going to give birth to a child who's the mighty God, the Son of the Most High. <clears throat> and the Lord God <clears throat> will give him the throne of his father, David, for how long? And he'll reign over the house of Jacob forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. But wait, man, that sounds familiar. The throne of his father, David, to reign over Jacob forever? Hmm, where did we read that? Oh, here. <clears throat> there will be no end. <clears throat> Ugh, Lord Jesus, have mercy on my throat. <clears throat> Destroy the phlegm. Rebuke Satan. <clears throat> By the power of the blood of Christ. There'll be no end to the increase of his government or peace on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish, uphold him with justice and righteousness for then on and forevermore. Oh, did you see that Isaiah 9 is being fulfilled in Luke 1? Mary is being told, you are the mother <clears throat> that will give birth to the child who's the great light that will shine from Galilee. Who's the mighty God who will sit on David's throne forever? That's what Zechariah was announcing. Right? But Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I'm a virgin? The angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. <clears throat> and for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. You understand what Gabriel was telling Mary? Mary, you will conceive and give birth to the mighty God. Meaning, Mary is the mother of the mighty God. She conceives, gives birth to the mighty God in the flesh. So she truly is Theotokos. And to make it even more amazing, ah, these hiccups. Ya Allah. Let me show you in the next chapter, who is the mighty God in Isaiah 10, 20. Mary gives birth to the child what child the child is a great light that shines from galilee to bring people out of the shadow of death which is what zachariah was alluding to here showing the fulfillment and mary's conceiving that child and that child that mary gives birth to is who the mighty god right the mighty god now here's what's amazing 
Isaiah 9 says, the child born, this male baby born of a woman, is the mighty God in the flesh, the God-man. But this exact title, El Gibor, is used in the next chapter, Isaiah 10, 20 to 21. Now will be in that day, now it will be in that day, right, that the remnant of Israel and those of the house of Jacob who have escaped will never again rely on the one who struck them, but will truly rely on Yahweh. Now who's Yahweh? The only one of Israel. A remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob, to the mighty God. Notice, Yahweh is called the mighty God, El Gibor. But in the chapter previously, Isaiah says, a child will be born, a male baby born, who's the mighty God. You understand what this means? It means that the Theotokos, the Holy Mother, the Holy Virgin, our Blessed Mother, was carrying, conceiving the physical body, the human flesh, the human nature of Yahweh, the mighty God. Because there's only one mighty God. And she carried him in her womb. No woman will be given this honor. This is why we honor her and love her, because this is an honor that no one will be given. And you want to treat her as ordinary? You serious? Right here, the biblical basis for the term Theotokos. All right. So you guys see how rich your Bible is? All these spiritual nuggets divinely designed, <clears throat> coded message, even in the naming. So you understand what Zechariah was saying here? Zechariah was saying, you, John, are now part of the prophecy, which states the mighty God would be born as a male child who is the great light who will shine from Galilee. And you're going to go ahead of him and prepare for his way. You see it? That's what Zechariah is saying. But what about this part? Luke 1, 7, Luke 1, 78. Let's go a little deeper. And by the way, Luke is not the only one that says that our Lord fulfills Isaiah 9, 1, 10. Let's go here. You ready? Okay, watch here. Isaiah 9, 1 and 2. Watch here. Let's go deep. But there will be no more gloom for her who was in anguish. In earlier times, he treated the land of Zebulon, land of Laphtali, with contempt. But later on, he shall make it glorious by the way of the sea on the other side of Jordan, Galilee, the Gentiles. Zach, let me know if you're open today, by the way. The people walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in the land of the shadow of death, the light will shine on them. Where? By the sea, river Jordan, Galilee, the Gentiles. Now watch our Lord. Watch our Lord. Where does he go? Let me read from here. Hold on. Where is John baptizing? Jordan River, right? All right. Let's go here. Then Jesus arrived from Galilee at the Jordan. Coincidence? Notice Galilee at the Jordan. He comes from Galilee to Jordan. By the way of the sea on the other side of Jordan. Galilee of the Gentiles. Coincidence? John is at the Jordan preparing Jesus, who comes from Galilee, to be baptized by him. Watch how miraculous your Bible is. You don't need to ask, Panpon. My videos are your videos as long as you don't sell them. Do what you want for the glory of the Lord, brother. But John tried to prevent him, saying, I have need to be baptized by you. Where? He came from Galilee to the Jordan. John tried to prevent him, saying, I have need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered, said to him, Permit it at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. See, John is saying, I need you to give me the Holy Spirit. But you're coming to me, and Jesus says, It's part of God's plan, John. This is God's righteous will. God's ways are perfect. His will is perfectly just and righteous. There's a wisdom in you baptizing me. Do you guys want me to go in depth? We're going to get into it. Then he permitted him. And after being baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were open. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming upon him. And behold, there was a voice out of heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Do you make the connection with Isaiah 9, 6? A son 
is given, a son is given, a great light shining from Galilee Gentiles by the way of the Jordan River. All right. So then what does our Lord do? Then Jesus was left to the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now watch. He returns and he starts preaching in Galilee. He starts preaching in Galilee to fulfill what? Now, when Jesus heard that John had been taken into custody, he departed into Galilee and leaving Nazareth. Look where he comes. He came and lived in Capernaum, Capernaum, which is by the sea in the region of Zebulon and Naphtali in order that what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet would be fulfilled, saying, the land of Zebulon, land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee the Gentiles, the people were sitting in the darkness, saw a great light, and those who were sitting in the land and shadow of death, upon them a light dawn. Is your Bible miraculous or what? And you see how it all points to Jesus our Lord? Mraga, make rumble great again, Stacy. Yanni, glory to Lord God in the beginning. You see it all converges? He comes from Galilee to Jordan, where John is baptized. Then he goes and begins ministering in Galilee to fulfill Isaiah 9, 1 and 2. But who is that great light of Isaiah 9, 1 and 2? The child born of a woman who's the mighty God in the flesh. That's what Zechariah was announcing. But he not only references Isaiah 9, 2. This first part here, get ready, guys. What else is he referencing? <gasps> okay, let me show you something. What is he quoting here? You ready? Luke 178. Because of the tender mercy of our God, with which the sunrise from on high will visit us. Sunrise on high. It's not referring to the sun. It's referring to a person. Who? Malachi 4.2. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness will rise. With healing in its wings, the sun disk will rise to bring healing. And you will go forth and skip about like calves from the stall. Wait, Zechariah is saying that Malachi 4.2, that the sun of righteousness who will rise with healing will, will shine upon the people? Yeah, that's what he's referring to. Sunrise on high will visit us. Do you understand what he's saying here? He's saying... That sun, S-U-N, who is righteous, that was to rise and shine on us with his light, the light of healing salvation, has come. You got it? But hold on. If you still don't get it, I'm going to go a little deeper. Is it sinking in before I move on? I'm giving you a minute for it to digest. You understand what Zechariah is referencing? Malachi 4.2. You understand he's telling you the son of righteousness has now risen, shining with light that is life-giving and healing. And that son, S-U-N of righteousness, is our Lord Jesus who went around healing people who touched him. Even the word wings is also a reference to Jesus' fringes because he will have fringes on his robe. And the woman who was <clears throat> ashamed to show herself, who had a bleeding disorder for 12 years, it says she, taught, she touched the fringes of his garment, the wings of his garment, and she was healed. You understand? Okay, did it sink in? Now, hold on, though. This Malachi 4 says something else. Same chapter. Behold, I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet. Now, watch here. Let me get you ready for this. Elijah the prophet. Ready? Elijah the prophet. Okay, watch here. Watch here. Get ready. Look how deep we're going to go. All right, so 
Malachi 4.2 says, the sun, S-U-N, will rise, right, with healing in its wings, the sun disk. All right, right here. But that same Malachi 4 says, 5 to 6, behold, I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet. What is he going to do? Before the coming of the great and awesome day of Yahweh, and he will turn the hearts of their fathers to their children. Remember this part. And the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land, devoting it to destruction. Remember this, right? What did Gabriel say to Zechariah? Luke 1, 15 to 17. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. Your son will be great. He will not drink any wine or strong drink. He'll be a Nazarite. Number six. He'll be filled with the Holy Spirit while yet in his mother's womb. He will turn many of the sons of Israel back to the Lord their God. He will be, go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and disobedient to the attitude of the righteous and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Gabriel is saying John is the Elijah of Malachi 4, 5 to 6. Here he is. This is the Elijah. Not the actual Elijah, but someone who will be filled with the same power and spirit that Elijah was filled. You caught it now? Do you see how many references, allusions to the Old Testament there are? In your Bible, that if you don't know your Bible, you're not going to make these connections. Elijah will be sent to turn the hearts of the father to children and the hearts of the children of fathers. What did Gabriel say? He will go before him in the spirit, meaning the same Holy Spirit that filled Elijah and empowered him, will fill John to do what Elijah did. Turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children. All right. That's why Jesus says something interesting. Watch it. Okay, ready? That's why I say I got to do a part two. We're going to go here. I'm going to add verse one here. Okay, you got it, right? He's not Elijah reincarnated. It's not the human spirit of Elijah that indwells it. It's the Holy Spirit that will empower and energize him to be like Elijah and do what Elijah did. Okay, now. That's why our Lord says something interesting. Speaking of John the Baptist, Matthew 11, verses 10 and 15, quoting Malachi 3, 1, which is part of Malachi 4, our Lord says about John the Baptist, this is the one about whom it is written. John is the one that Malachi wrote about in Malachi 3, 1 and Malachi 4, 5 to 6. Same section of scripture. This is Malachi 3, 1. But the next chapter, Malachi 4, verse 5, 6 says, this messenger is Elijah. But Jesus is telling you, he is not Elijah, but an Elijah type. He's a messenger who's like Elijah. Like David is like Jesus. And Solomon is like Jesus. And Israel is like, you understand how it works? All right. You guys fall asleep? I feel like I'm boring you guys. This is stuff I know, but I don't want to be boring to you. All right. Now watch. Behold, I send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not arisen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Now watch. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Violent men take it by force. People want to force their way into the kingdom of God. That's not how you enter. But now watch. Watch here. Look what our Lord says. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. Very key point. I'm going to come back to this. And if you are willing to accept it, John himself is Elijah who was to come. There you go. If you're willing to believe me, Elijah already came. John is the Elijah type. John comes in the likeness of Elijah. John is empowered by the Spirit to do what Elijah did. So Elijah has come. Don't look for him. Don't look for him. You get it? He already came. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Okay. That Jesus is not saying John is Elijah reincarnated. Let's go a little deeper. Matthew 17, verses 1 to 9. Who appears 
before Jesus. And six days, Matthew 17, verse 1 to 9, and six days later, Jesus brought with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his face shone like the sun, and his garments became as white as light. And behold, Moses and the actual Elijah show up. Here is the actual Elijah. He appears with Moses. There's the actual Elijah. So now they got the best of both worlds. Peter, James, and John saw the actual Elijah and Moses bearing witness to Christ. And then the masses saw the Elijah type, John the Baptist. Good job, Corey. Right? And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I'll make three booths here, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. So here's the actual Elijah. So neither the Lord Jesus nor the disciples are confused about John the Baptist and what it means for him to be Elijah. They're not saying he's the reincarnation of Elijah. No, because the actual Elijah is right there with Moses. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, the voice out of the cloud said, This is my beloved son, with whom I will please listen to him. When disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. And Jesus came to them and touched them and said, Get up and do not be afraid. Okay? And lifting up their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. Now watch here. Since Elijah actually showed up, then what does it mean that John is Elijah? He is an Elijah type. Elijah is a code name for someone who will come, who will be like Elijah, empowered by the same Holy Spirit. Not Elijah reincarnated. Okay, watch. And as they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them saying, Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? See, they don't the scribes say he must come? Look. And the answer said, Elijah is coming, we'll serve all things. But I say to you that Elijah already came. Yeah, he's coming. But he already did come. And they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they wished. So also Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he had spoken to them about John the Baptist. So wait, he said, Elijah already showed up and the people didn't recognize him. That's John the Baptist. But hold on. Jesus cannot mean that John is Elijah reincarnated. How do I know that? Because the real Elijah showed up that same day. So here's the real Elijah appearing with Moses. So then what does it mean that John is the Elijah that was to come? Meaning Elijah is a code name for someone else who will be like Elijah, John the Baptist. We got it now or no? We got it now or no? Is your Bible not miraculously deep and mind-blowing? That's why Gabriel said he will come in the spirit and power of Elijah, meaning he's not Elijah, but the same Holy Spirit that empowered Elijah, right, will empower him. Here it is again. 